Well, it's been well over a year since the announcement of Breath of the Wild 2, and it's clearly not even close to finished, but it's better that they take their time than rush a sequel to one of, if not the, greatest game on the Switch. To make the wait a little less painful, Nintendo has given us Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which takes place 100 years before the events of Breath of the Wild. Although a completely different kind of game, a good one nonetheless, and great for filling the time until Breath of the Wild 2. Alright, let's jump into the actual review. I should have posted a video just before this outlining my current review policy, but in case you missed it, here's the general overview. I will discuss the game in relation to seven categories, gameplay, plot and characters, music and sound, graphics and art, inventiveness and design, interface and controls, and finally difficulty. Each category is scored out of 1, with 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc., with a maximum score of 7 for any given game. I go more into detail on those categories in the review video, but you'll get the gist very quickly. Uh, please note that I haven't decided a specific order and changes may be made later. Feel free to recommend any changes. Let's talk about the plot and characters first. Spoiler warning for all of this, just in case, but I'm going to try not to reveal anything major. As mentioned, this takes place 100 years before Breath of the Wild, when the Calamity has not yet attacked for the first time. Now you may be thinking, Ah yes, wonderful. I sure do enjoy getting to know characters, just to see all of them die because no one's alive in Breath of the Wild. But here's the thing, and I'm not sure what to think about this, but there's time travel. There's this mini guardian that travels back in time to prevent the Calamity and save Zelda, and I won't say anything, but major events have changed, kind of undoing all the meaningful parts of Breath of the Wild. That sucks, right? I'm thinking Nintendo will make this an alternate timeline, because that would just be a bad idea to essentially delete the game this is based on. I don't think Breath of the Wild 2 will follow the events of this game, because a lot of important events that caused Breath of the Wild 2 never happened in this timeline. It's very weird that the game is basically canon, but it's actually not. On to the characters. This game does a great job of taking the characters from Breath of the Wild and going deeper with them, in addition to introducing new characters, such as Aster, known as the Fortune Teller, an evil mage working with the Iga clan. We get to see Impa in her prime, a talented warrior and member of the Shiki clan, instead of an old woman whose purpose is for exposition. Zelda is obviously highlighted the most, as many cutscenes focus on her struggle to be confident in herself and her inability to awaken her divine power until the last possible moment. Although there isn't much depth, the plot and characters serve their purpose well in the overall movement of the game, and the plot has never been the highlight in the Zelda franchise. I'll give plot and characters a 0.6 out of 1 because the plot is interesting and invests you in the characters while being fairly standard for a Zelda plot, which is never a bad thing. Also, I don't know what Nintendo is going to do with this time travel stuff. Hopefully nothing stupid. Alright, next we'll cover the gameplay. This game has a very unique style of play that's not appealing to a lot of people, because it seems kind of mindless and possibly boring, but I like it. There are basically two states of mind. You either feel unstoppable and untouchable, or you have one heart and the boss is barely taking damage. There are many characters to play as, and when I finished the game I had 16 characters. Most characters work as you'd expect them, but some are creative and innovative, like how Zelda uses the runes through his Sheikah Slate. There are several weapon classes from Breath of the Wild, such as one-handed, two-handed, and spears. Most characters are restricted to one class in different forms, but Link has access to many different weapons. Another special thing about Link is that you can change his armor sets. It seems mostly for cosmetic purposes, but some have elemental resistance. I didn't really change the armor during my playthrough. The combat mostly consists of mashing X and Y, dodging an attack, and then doing it again until victory. Standard enemies pose no threat at all and can be killed in a few hits, but bosses have to be beaten down and eventually hit with a weak point attack, which deals considerable damage. All characters can use runes, and during certain enemy attacks, a rune will be highlighted, and if used in time, will reveal their weak point gauge. Something very cool about this game is being able to revisit battles discussed in Breath of the Wild, such as the Battle of Akala Citadel. Another new thing is being able to play as the Divine Beasts at certain times, causing even more mass destruction. This game uses all of Breath of the Wild's map, with missions, quests, and battles scattered throughout. While certain main missions can take up to 45 minutes, battles on the map will be very short with a goal like, kill 100 enemies. Other quests involve giving resources from battle to upgrade your characters with a new move or extra heart, unlocking a new shop, or leading to other quests upon completion. I did a lot of the side quests, and when I finished the game, I had only completed about 60% of everything on the map. Although the combat is fun, it can get stale very easily after a long battle. This isn't a game you can play non-stop, but when you're in the midst of an intense battle, you can't just get up and leave. 
The gameplay works well in this format, but it's fairly basic, and the way I play has little strategy involved, but it's nice to see all elements of Breath of the Wild used in a different style of game. I give gameplay a 0.6 out of 1. Then, there's music and sound. Some people were disappointed with Breath of the Wild's soundtrack, thinking it wasn't as memorable as the other games and didn't serve nostalgia quite enough, but I didn't have any issues with it. Age of Calamity remixes a lot of music from Breath of the Wild and is basically an extension of the original soundtrack. It's good, you know, above average and whatever. The Guardian theme is still a banger, etc. There's also voice acting. It's not amazing or anything, but it does what it's supposed to and isn't at all bad. This is a prequel, so there shouldn't be any musical innovation or any big difference from the original. There's really not that much to say about it. It fits in intense battles and it fits in cutscenes. Brings memories of Breath of the Wild. Solid 0.6 out of 1, again. Next category. Age of Calamity excellently replicates Breath of the Wild's visual style, although there isn't much credit due because I'm sure most of the assets are reused. Every detail is matched, like enemy health bars, flurry rushes, and landscapes. I think maybe the most impressive thing about both Hyrule Warriors games is the animations that play during certain attacks. Each character has at least one animation for their special attack, weak point attack, and one for all four runes. Even some random combos have special designs. After enough attacks, Zelda spawns a minecart and starts ramming the enemy. One of my favorite visuals is one of Impa's, where she throws her hat in the air and disappears, and then Shadow Clones start slicing the opponent as her hat drifts back to the ground. When he reaches the ground, Impa reappears holding the hat to her head. It's just epic, trust me. I'm gonna give graphics and art a 0.7 out of 1 because it's nothing new for the Warrior series or the Zelda series, but still is impressive in its detail and mastery of the world. Alright, let's discuss inventiveness and design. I'll mostly discuss changes from the last Hyrule Warriors game because this game combines two games that already exist, so innovation shouldn't be expected. I think this game improved a lot on Hyrule Warriors, mostly by removing a lot of the extra clutter that the original game had. It had almost too much stuff to do. There were like five modes that I never even played, and every single character had like a 30 part skill tree that required a ton of grinding. Although at first I was a little disappointed by the amount of characters in Age of Calamity, it allowed me to play all of them and learn all of their movesets compared to the literal 31 characters in the first game. On the topic of design, I don't really have much to say. I mean, the game's not buggy or glitchy or anything, aside from the camera being a little wonky sometimes. But it is well designed, I just can't think of anything else specific to mention. I'll give it a 0.7 under 1. Next up is interface and controls. The controls are intuitive, mostly mimicking controls from the first Hyrule Warriors, with Y and X as attack buttons, B's dodge, and A for special attack. The right trigger does something unique for each character, such as Link's bow or Arbosa's lightning charge. It's fairly smooth, and you can rack up a lot of combos by dodging at the right time and taking advantage of holes in the enemy's attack. As I mentioned in the design section, cutting out unnecessary material also cleaned up menus and UI. You always know where you're going and what you're doing, and the large map is easy to navigate. Although the combos can be confusing, I think most people just mash X and Y like I do, so that doesn't really affect the fluidity of the game. Nothing's complicated, and the flow of the game is very smooth. 0.7 out of 1. Finally, difficulty. I did my playthrough on normal difficulty, because I wanted a more casual experience, but some of the later missions and side quests I had to try many times, or even come back at a higher level. I would recommend playing at at least normal, and if you want a more strategic battlefield management type of playthrough, where all of your actions have to be thought about and perfected, then one of the harder difficulties is probably better. Each mission and side quest has a recommended level for your characters to be at, and I was typically slightly below that level, but it worked out most of the time. There's a great difficulty curve towards the end of the game, and it ramps up very quickly, forcing you to actually coordinate all of your character's movements in time to secure victory. There aren't any abrupt difficulty spikes in bad places, and the game managed to challenge me on normal difficulty. I'll say 0.6 out of 1. I don't know if difficulty should even get its own category, so... Through all the categories, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity earned a total of 4.5 out of 7 in my rating system. This is my first review, and this may seem like a bad score, but the system is supposed to be designed so that below 3.5 is bad and above is good. With that system, Age of Calamity is a solid, above-average game, but not astoundingly innovative or anything, which I think is a fitting score. I recommend this game to any fans of Zelda or the Warrior series that provided content while waiting for Breath of the Wild 2. That's about all I have to say for today. Thanks for watching. Hi, it's the end of the video. While I was writing this, I realized that, uh... This review system's a piece of garbage, and it doesn't work on any primarily multiplayer game or something like Animal Crossing. Like, it just doesn't apply at all. Uh, who knows what I will do in the future.
thanks thanks for watching i guess bye bye